Good afternoon, 2.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm T-Speaker 222 with the ISO headquarters. I want to thank everybody for tuning in as we approach 800 subscribers. And I have another update here for you. I'm trying to come at you more often here once again. And this is just came out April 13th. It's Banking Circle adopts ISO 20 or 20022 messaging standard. And after this, I want you guys to stick around because I'm going to play probably the first five or six minutes of the ISO 20022 and the CBPR Plus update. This is from the ISO 20022 webinar. And you got the, ma the moderator and panelists and their positions and whatever. So you got the ISO 20022 consultant Interscope. You've got Paul Sutcliffe, Senior Swift Architect at Barclays. You've got Olaf Grossler, Head of Implementation Interscope and Head of Sales Intercope, Darof Kirby. Um, but we're not going to go through all of them, but you're going to hear what the senior Swift architect in the Barclays has to say to the moderator. And they're going to kind of go back. Actually, the moderator, you're going to hear what he talks about the ISO 20022 for sure. We're going to hear that. But first, I want to get through this. So make sure to hit the like button, share this far and wide on social media so we can try to get this uh, channel much more in the mainstream. So Banking Circle adopts ISO 20022 messaging standard. Three years ahead of the 2025 deadline for completion, Banking Circle has now fully adopted the ISO 20022 messaging standard, a single common format for all financial communications. ISO 20022 allows participants and systems in different markets to communicate in a consistent message format using an agreed terminology to conduct business financial institutions, exchange massive amounts of information with their customers and other institutions, commented, the, commented lost, Bertelson, CEO of Banking Circle, such, such exchanges only work if the sender and receiver of a message have a common understanding of how to interpret this information. Rather than managing multiple market systems that speak different languages, ISO 20022 offers a universal messaging language. Many real-time low-value and high-value clearing systems around the world have begun their migration and are using ISO 20022 with many more to follow by the end of the year. We are delighted to be a part of the early wave of businesses that have adopted the new standard. It is perfectly aligned with our mission of simplifying cross-border payments, breaking down barriers to international trade by removing unnecessary delays and challenges with reconciliation and by being ready ahead of the deadline our clients can benefit immediately. Available to banking circle clients using SFTP and API, ISO 20022 improves end-to-end -end processing across domains and ge geographies that currently use a vast range of standards and information formats and as a common technical language, it will make it easier for businesses to adapt to change in the economy, technology, and innovation. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's showing you how rapidly the adoption's happening, and this is just another bank that follows suit. Make sure to hit that like button. I hope you enjoy this next little part. This is going to show you a little breakdown of what's going on with the ISO 20022. It's the webinar. just came out, but I'm going to play you some of it. Enjoy, everybody. Well, good morning and good afternoon and good evening, as appropriate, depending on your time zone. And thanks very much indeed for coming, everyone. Um, the idea of this session is to provoke some discussion. <laughs> I'm afraid I've just noticed that the first discussion point is probably my spelling of CBPR plus on that holding slide. To those of you who spotted the deliberate spelling mistake, congratulations, you're on the board. There's plenty for us to talk about. We have a few things to share with you, including some breaking news, but we would love to hear from you too. So if you would like to join our discussion, please add your comment or question in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen, anonymously, if you like. Uh, I will try to make sure we have time to answer as many as possible of your comments and questions. Real-time gross settlement systems are questions in the next 45 minutes, but we can also chat with you by mail afterwards. My email address is going to come up at the end of the session, and uh, we're all looking forward to hearing from you, so don't hold back. 2022 is quite a year for us. The adoption of ISO 2002 as the international language of payments is imminent. And even now... This is what I want you guys to hear this first five minutes. I'll let you guys listen. I think it's an underestimated challenge. 
real-time growth settlement systems across the Eurozone in the UK, the US, Singapore, Hong Kong, the Philippines, Australia, and elsewhere across the globe, across the globe will have migrated to ISO 2002 by the end of 2025. Individual schemes which already use ISO 2002 messages include SEPA credit transfers, SEPA direct debits, instant credit transfers, and of course, correspondent banking starts from November of this year. And the picture keeps changing. I mentioned breaking news to you. There is a new version of the CBPR plus specifications, which is the version that is going to go live in November, published on my standards as recently as Friday. Recently, also, the Bank of England announced a significant change to its own ISO 2002 rollout plan, effectively removing the like-for-like deployment for CHAPS that was originally planned for this summer. The complexity of handling scenarios that cross over the boundaries between schemes is becoming clear, as is the challenge of how to reconcile all the new message exchanges internally. The number of institutions affected by ISO 2002 now is in the tens of thousands, but the number of business relationships affected is much, much higher. The need for knowledge sharing and collaboration within our community has never been more compelling, especially as the picture even now keeps changing. At Intercope, we believe in avoiding technology silos. We believe in consolidation of sources of ISO 2002 data across different payment schemes, thus avoiding the complex spaghetti junction style architectures, which many banks have spent years and a lot of resources previously unraveling. We believe that the optimal architecture includes one single technology for transformation and integration to manage all ISO 2002 migrations and that keeping control of those transformations in house where possible is key to managing the complexity of these migrations and potentially harvesting this richer payments data exchange, which is what ISO 2002 is all about in the future. Maintaining one solution uh, for this across the RTGS schemes, such as CHAPS and Target 2 is relatively straightforward because those market infrastructure programs typically do not provide additional transformation or amendments to the messages being sent and received. The challenge we face in the new SWIFT CBPR Plus setup does introduce new uh, elements, such as the transaction management platform and, of course, inflow translation of messages between ISO 2002 and MT, which does introduce additional functionality and therefore additional elements of risk, with some transformations being done on the network through SWIFT and others not. It also adds overall solution complexity with potential gaps and overlaps from use of multiple technologies uh, and uh, and of course multiple different business and technology entities to provide message handling and translation for different payment schemes even within the walls of, this, of, of a single bank in addition we face challenges such as truncation uh, and what we call glue back which we will explore for you a little later uh, removing, accessing and adding back in script off fields for return messages pre and post transformation. In short, uh, there are some grey areas uh, around where some functions should be. With all of this in mind, we've organised this event really as the start uh, of helping us to develop a common understanding of key challenges. OK, guys, I want to go to a little bit further in this because I don't want you guys have to sit here for 30 minutes, but I want you guys to get a little more information. Really key so that we avoid these silos that, I, um, that um, Andrew touched on earlier as part of this. So to be able to have a single solution where all of this can coexist and you can have the controls, interact with RMA, etc., provide all of it. So return and reject handling, or glueback as it's often called, is something which, again, is something where you really see the different formats, the existence between the different schemes and managing all of this and how this interoperability against the schemes challenges your solution is something we will look to in more detail. So returns and rejects, RMA, transformations, duplicate to text. Again, we'd like to hear from you guys if there are others that you'd like to explore beyond that. But these are really the key ones we see 
as we cross over into ISO 20022, um, and as we dig into the solutioning of what's required for each of the schemes in the CDPR Plus. So unfortunately, 45 minutes or so doesn't allow us to explore all of those concepts today, so we're going to focus on one use case in particular around the context of CDPR Plus, highlighting what needs to be done with, with box between the MTMX transformation framework, as opposed to if somebody who receives in from the inflow translator. But even if you were receiving in from the inflow translator, as we touched on earlier, you're likely to have to have one to have some form of transmission after that as well, because your back office system may not speak the exact language of the internal translator. Um, the Barclays, um, they, they introduce a clever way. Um, so when they send back, um, for example, an empty one to return message, um, they can hand over to us what we, in an earlier step, um, forward to GDP. Um, so they, they're doing the reconciliation already of the payment. Um, uh, on the back of the side, and then box working with this transformation um, to um, to create the next power messages. Um, so here we um, Why? we solve many problems with this approach. So um, if we have to drink our data, um, all the information is then stored um, with the original message on the UB2 block. All of the data is available for the backwards application, and in case that this data is needed. Um, it's returned back to the box and the box is in complete control uh, what, um, the, about the data box is working with. Um, but let me introduce um, another use case for this um, where you may not have a system like Barclays. Um, so my use case, you see this in the um, left um, upper corner of this slide, um, I was receiving a PAX 8 messages. Uh, one PAX8 message from the SIFT network and the transformation framework box creates the corresponding MT103. Um, the transformation rules for SIFT cost border payments are defining which data will be transferred, ignored, or truncated, uh, for example, um, uh, on the way to the PAX Act to the MT103, the address information can be mapped one by one. The MT103 message is sent then to the payment application, and the payment application is working on this. Um, for my example, it's creating the MT103 return uh, based on the formation of the MT103. And now you have two options. Either you send out the MT103 return as a FIN message and trust that the transaction manager will do the job, or you deciding to control your own transformation, create the corresponding PAX4 within the box transformation framework. And this gives you the flexibility to solve the problem by your own, and we'll show you how to be ready for the IC2022 payments. There's some information for the new PAX4 um, that can't be transported um, with the MT1 return. So this is the, as yeah, we said, already address information, also the um, to amount, currency, and, and settlement date uh, gives us some, some extra work to do. <clears throat> so the um, yeah, with our customers and, and um, Payments are entering a new era with ISO 20022, the new language for domestic payments and correspondent banking. And corporate customers are set to benefit thanks to the advanced reconciliation and treasury opportunities the new standard makes possible. Let's take an example. Coffee Co. is a boutique importer, roaster, and distributor of coffee beans based in London. Coffee Co.'s supplier in Indonesia has asked to be paid in U.S. dollars to its local account. Coffee Co. is happy to do this and, to make life easier, has agreed with its supplier to aggregate multiple invoices into a single payment. The batch of invoices to be paid includes one invoice that is not correct and needs adjustment and a credit note from a previous transaction that needs to be reconciled. Coffee Co. would like to present all this information in a single instruction, with a single payment setting the entire net amount outstanding. Using today's MT standard, they would not be able to do that. There's not enough room in the remittance field to describe all that is needed in a structured way that can be automatically processed. With an ISO 20022 based instruction, though Coffee Co. can pay all outstanding invoices, apply a credit note and contest a line item on an invoice. 
A single payment can describe multiple rich and structured elements, including dedicated fields to differentiate between commercial invoices, credit notes, and invoices that need adjustment. Declare local purpose codes required to report to the Indonesian regulator. Uniquely identify invoices in the buyer's ERP for easier reconciliation. And in cases of dispute, the amount to be adjusted and reason for adjustment. All parties in the payment chain know exactly what is being paid and settled, and there is no need for a single phone call or email. All this information can be reconciled and immediately posted to CoffeeCo and its supplier's ERP system, significantly driving supply chain and working capital efficiency. Corporates are ready. And with the adoption of ISO 20022 in correspondent banking and all major reserve currencies, end-to-end -end payments will be rich and structured, enabling the next generation of treasury services and a new era for corporate